Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, a birth defect is a problem that happens while a baby is developing inside the mother's body. You probably knew that. I do, yes. The term, the medical term, is in utero. Well, according to the National Institutes of Health, one out of every 33 babies in the United States is born with a birth defect. That's amazing. Most birth defects happen during the first three months of pregnancy. Some birth defects are mild or even unnoticeable, but severe birth defects can be life-altering for the entire family. You know, but now there's sometimes a way out. (laughs) Fetal surgery. It's a procedure in which an operation is actually performed on an unborn baby to improve their long-term outcome. For example, surgeons might perform open fetal surgery if um, a fetus has been diagnosed before birth with spina bifida. That's a defect in the development of the spine where the backbone and the tissues around the spinal cord don't close normally. And so a fetal surgeon can actually go in there and fix that problem in utero. Amazing. Not just any fetal surgeon. Mm -hmm. Here to discuss surgical interventions for birth defects is fetal surgeon Dr. Rodrigo Ruano. Welcome to the program. Welcome to Mayo Clinic. It's great to meet you, Dr. Ruano. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here. It's especially nice to meet you because you are the first fetal surgeon I've ever met. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How many of it, th- there can't be too many in the in the world, are there? I don't think so. I think there are s- some uh, physicians that can provide who can provide those uh, type of surgeries. Yeah. So how do you uh, train to become a fetal surgeon? <laughs> That's a long story. I I um, I went to France, to Paris. I did my fellowship there, my training there. Uh, I was lucky enough to follow some of uh, those uh, fetal surgeons. Uh, and then uh, I, I have my training there, yeah. And and it's, so you have done, a, what, a general surgery resident or a OB-GYN residency? Or no. w- what do you do before you be do a fetal surgery fellowship? Yeah, so I'm a, an obstetrician, so I deal with pregnant patients. And then uh, I uh, learn maternal fetal medicine, uh, uh, and then uh, fetal intervention. So I, I, I did all this uh, training in my life. So long, long, long way. And how long does it, is it called a fellowship or a residency in, in fetal surgery? How long? Fellowship. So it's uh, three years, three, four years of residency in OBGYN, then uh, two years in ma- three years in maternal fetal meds, and more two years in fetal intervention. So. There are um, four surgeries that you perform. Yes. Can you explain explain each of them to us? What do you do? Okay, so the first uh, procedure uh, that uh, I perform is the fetoscopic laser ablation for twin 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 transition syndrome. So twin twin transition syndrome is a uh, it's not a very common situation that we have uh, one placenta for two babies, so we have identical twins, uh, and then uh, unfortunately, when once we have one placenta, sometimes, well, usually they share connections, uh, blood connections, and sometimes those connections are not balanced. So one fetus receives too much blood flow and the other one does not receive uh, mm. enough blood. And previously, the mother then would have lost, probably oh, lost that other twin. A, more than 80% of the time, they would lost, uh, they would lose the, 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 the babies. So what do you Both do? Babies? Both they babies? Both oh. babies. So you have one placenta, two babies. Yes. And how do you fix that? So we put, uh, we introduce a very tiny scope, uh, telescope or camera inside the uterus and then we use we identify those connections on the placental sur- surface and then using a cold laser we, we can uh, coagulate those vessels and we can stop that, that problem so that's uh, when we get to what will and charlie mayo used to do they did not have the telescopic they did not have the laser these are tools that are relatively new that a surgeon such as yourself now can use that previously were not available. Yes, so, uh, and the technique too. So we, we improved a lot the technique. Before we used to do not selective ablation, now we identified specifically which vessels mm-hmm. are causing the problem. So, so the survival rate after this procedure increased, improved a lot. All right, and that, that operation is called a twin-twin what? So the operation called fetoscopic laser ablation. Uh, the disease is twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Twin, twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Yes. All, All right. right. It's complicated. What's the, yeah. What's the <laughs> next one? So the next one that we do is exactly what you mentioned before: is that uh, we fi- we close the spinal bifida defect. So some of those babies, uh, 
they can have an open spina bifida. That means the nerves can be exposed expo- exposed to the amniotic fluid. So that the nerves aren't covered like they should be by normal soft tissue. Yes, uh, and they are more in contact, they are clo- in a closer con- contact with the amniotic fluid, and then this can cause more problems, to the, more damage to the, to the brain and to the neurons. Oh, so that's why you do it uh, in utero yes. instead of waiting until after the baby is born. Yes, that's that's what we believe, and it was proved that that's the, the reason for that. Yeah. So it helps their brain to develop. Yes. Ah. So uh, once we close in utero, we can even improve the brain situation. For example, the, the Chiari malformation, that means the posterior part of the brain comes down because it's leaking fluid. So we can stop that process, and before the baby is born, we can reverse that situation. And how do you close the defect? You, you sew up the tissues over top of the exp- uh, nerves that are hanging out in the breeze, huh? So this in the amniotic fluid. Yeah, we doing. Co- uh, we have a big team. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary uh, approach. So first, we 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 open the uterus of the patient. We expose the the the, the fetal back, the baby's back, and then the neurosurgeon close the the defect or the problem exactly that. He, he would do after birth. So, all right, we're ready for number three. <laughs> so number three is that uh, when once we have a, a, a baby, especially a boy that has an obstruction in the bladder, so the bladder is obstructed. We we call urethral obstruction or lower urinary tract obstruction, and then uh, since the fetus cannot urinate anymore, so then it's the, am- the amount of amniotic fluid around the, the baby will reduce. So that I- impacts the lung development, and then the lungs will be smaller. So those babies, they can die after birth. Mm. And the second problem is that the, the urine uh, remains inside the bladder, and it comes back to the kidneys, and we can have uh, the kidneys can become dilated, and it can be sick. Because the urine can't get out. Yes. Because then, of the obstruction. Yeah, and then the, these babies... Some then they survive without treatment, and they can have they w- they will need to they will need they will need they will need to have dialysis or transplant after birth. So what we can do, we can s- first try to bypass the obstruction using a small shunt, or I can put a scope inside and try to s- to identify the cause of the obstruction and try to fix the cause of the obstruction. And then we can improve the amount of amniotic fluid around the baby, so the lungs can develop, the baby can survive, and we reduce. Uh, significantly the chance of having renal uh, problems and dialysis. Kidney problems, yes. renal. Okay, and uh, number four? Number four is my favorite because that's why <laughs> I, I have Save studied the best a lot. For last. Yeah. Yes, is that uh, some babies they have uh, something called as congenital diaphragmatic hernia that is a hole in the diaphragm which is a muscle that separates the chest and the belly and this muscle is very important for us to breathe after birth. But the main problem is that uh, once we have the, that hole, the organs from the belly comes up into the chest, in, into the chest, mm. and then it causes compression, uh, compre- compress the lungs and the heart. Mm-hmm. So especially the lungs, and then we don't have enough lung development. So, so like s- the spina bifida, if that is not fixed, that baby is born with that birth defect. What happens to a baby that is born without that? diaphragmatic hernia fixed. Yes. Yeah, the difference is that the, the if the baby is born with the diaphragmatic hernia, severe form, the lungs are so, so small that it sometimes the baby cannot survive. Oh. Uh, or they c- the baby will need a, a treatment to try to see if we can fix that, and then maybe the baby will have lots of complications related to the to the lungs. During which trimester do you do this fetal surgery? So the surgery that we do, we, we introduce a very tiny scope inside around 22 to 29 weeks. From 22 to 29 weeks, uh, we introduce a very tiny scope, telescope, inside the, the amniotic cavity, the fluid around the baby, just puncture the, the maternal belly. We, d- we use even local anesthesia nowadays, and then we, we introduce the, we advance those that, that scope inside the f- the baby's mouth, and then we go inside the, the trachea, which is the the windpipe. Mm-hmm. P- yes, and then we we just put a small balloon inside the t- uh, detachable balloon. We live there for more five or f- four to six weeks, and this treatment will promote the lungs. Will promote growth of the lungs, and then this baby will have a still congenital diaphragmatic hernia, but will have a less severe uh, pulmonary hypoplasia. That means the lungs will be better, and then the chance of survival will increase. A lot. So you go into the uterus, through the baby's mouth, 
down into the lungs. Just <laughs> I had to just hold on. <laughs> I had to sit back and relax on that one. That doesn't even seem possible. Yes. Uh, so uh, in the past, it was not possible. When they started this procedure, they need to open the uterus, put a, cl a clip to, to clip the, to occlude the trachea. Nowadays, we just do a, like, a tiny procedure, a very s uh, soft, small procedure. We put a s small telescope inside, and we can see where the trachea is when we put on a we, uh, we leave a balloon there, and we leave for four, four six weeks, and then uh, the lungs, they grow. It's all pretty incredible, every one of these operations. The one thing we forgot to ask you, though, is how you make the diagnosis. I mean, before you can fix something, you got to know it's there, and how do you figure well out that they, there is a problem? That's very important. So uh, in order to for us to treat the babies, of course, we need to have a com complete correct diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So the diagnosis is based on a fetal ultrasound that we, we usually we do around 20 weeks, 20 to 22 weeks. Then, of course, once we have this diagnosis, then we recommend that the patient would be referred as soon as possible to a center like ours that we can provide the follow-up and we can investigate more the, the disease. So we can confirm the disease, we can check the baby's heart by doing fetal echocardiogram, we can do... We can check if the, the fetus has a uh, genetic anomaly before that because we need to exclude those, those problems. And, once we did and then we can also perform on the fetal magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, to, to evaluate the size of the lungs. And then once we have all these accomplished, the patient will discuss with all the team, then we, we can offer like fetal intervention. They send them to you and you fix them. <laughs> we'll try. The Mayo Clinic fetal surgeon, Dr. Rodrigo Verano. I have to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, I did not know before I met you that there was such a thing as a fetal and maternal medicine group at Mayo Clinic. What, I, what do you do? Yeah, so that's, uh, thank you for your question. So the maternal fetal group, in reality, we take care of mothers with high-risk pregnancies. For example, if a patient has a cardiac uh, disease uh, or a patient has diabetes, so we take care of them too. Uh, her and then if we ha the fetus has a problem, we we take care of the, f the fetus too. So we do maternal and fetal uh, medicine together. Fetal surgeon Dr. Rodrigo Ruano, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for 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 your invitation. Yeah.